Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. And today I want to tell you one of the favorite things that I do in fall. So it's time to go out there and start checking out to see if some of your uh, flowers have gone to seed. So it might be a little early for some of you, especially those of you in warmer climates, but um, here in New Jersey, some of my flowers are starting uh, to show signs of some of those dried out seeds on their floral head, and it's time to harvest them. And then you can get loads of uh, free flowers in your garden for next year if you either store them the right way or if you direct seed them now, because some of them need to be direct seeded when it's cooler out. So I'm gonna tell you the who's who of some of your flowers today. So if you're joining me, please let me know uh, that you're here. I'd love to see who's here and let me know where you're viewing this from because I'd love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. You guys are all over the place. You're in Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, you're in Monroe, New Jersey, you're in Staten Island, Alabama, you're in, um, you're, you're all over the place, all these beautiful places, Tasmania. So please let me know where you're viewing this from, just like uh, either like the country or the state, you don't have to tell me exact, you know, we don't want anybody to, to get all uh, stalking stuff. So <laughs> anyway, so um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please feel free to do so by hitting the subscription button below because I love giving you guys loads of fun free flower tips each week. So uh, I have like this entire table just packed with stuff right now. So I'm trying to think where to even begin. So um, I guess right now, let me just address this giant like elephant in the room. These are my limelight hydrangeas right now. And um, they're just like spectacular. So I kind of have them front and center. Uh, but I just wanted to tell you a quick limelight hydrangea trick. I've been showing you guys in past videos how to dry these gals out. And it's a real simple trick. You just pretty much cut them when they're in this like lime green, kind of pinky stage, they're semi-dry. You put them in some water and then you keep them away from direct sunlight and they'll dry out. But I wanted to show you this great trick, especially if you're entertaining. Um, so basically you, you, once you dry them out, like this guy's totally dried out. So I think I actually showed you how to dry out this hydrangea like two weeks ago. And it's totally dried out, it's crispy, it's papery. Um, but I don't always have time to like, make fresh flower arrangements when like, you know, so I'm always like pressed for time. I feel like I'm, I'm always running late. So like even like right before this uh, live YouTube, I wanted to have like a really beautiful uh, grouping of flowers for you guys. And I was like, oh, I don't have time to make this beautiful bouquet. But what I did was I grabbed the vase of dried flowers that I had, you know, sitting in another place of the house. And I just added some fresh flowers to it. And I don't even know if you could tell the difference. Maybe you can, but let me just show you what this looks like. So this I just cut about literally like 10 minutes ago. So this is one of the smaller limelight hydrangea blooms. And I liked it because it's got like some of that extra color on it. So what I did was I just kind of popped it in here and um, I just kind of added it to some of the older blooms. And so like this guy's fresh, this guy's super old, this guy's super old, but all these fresh ones, I just kind of took this vase. Let me kind of put my camera down a bit. I took that vase and I just kind of fluffed it out. And so now it looks like a beautiful, giant, fresh flower arrangement. So I thought that was kind of like a fun little, little tip. So it's always fun to have some dried flower arrangements out there. And then right before I, you know, I came in the house, I also deadheaded some of my zinnias. And I've got this really super cute little container. I have to show you this, this is awesome. I basically just bought this like, like lid. And this lid's got these little tiny chicken wire holes in it and I just put it on top of a mason jar and when I go out to my zinnias to deadhead them because it's really important to deadhead your zinnias this time of year guys when you're out in your field looking for your you know seeds make sure that you're also snipping off some of your zinnia blooms your cosmos your celosia because as you're deadheading them you're encouraging the plant to give you loads and loads of more flowers up until the frost so when I went outside today looking for seeds to show you guys, I actually started deadheading them. But instead of just like leaving them in the field, I just put them in this cute little tchotchke vase. And I may have this on my Amazon shop page. I always have like, you know, like the, some of the fun stuff that I show you guys, garden tools, plants, florist tchotchkes. I have an Amazon shop page that's always listed on the bottom of my uh, YouTube descriptions. And so I think I might have this one. If not, I'll jump over there after this video and make sure I put something similar on there. But this is just a really fun thing to have in the house. And I know this sounds so stupid. I have this like by my bed and it makes me so happy. Like these seven or eight little tiny blooms that were literally just deadheaded in the field to encourage like more guys to come up. I had so much joy and happiness 
looking at this little tiny bouquet uh, before I go to bed. So it's just something cute to have by your bedside table or by your kitchen sink or even like in your bathroom or when you have guests that come. I mean, I know this sounds silly, but people remember little tiny things like that. And it's so easy to do. So, um, so that's my zinnia. So when I was out in the field today looking for great seeds to harvest, um, I wanted to find zinnias that looked like, let me find my good guy. I've got like a whole, the good, the bad, and the ugly here. I bypassed blooms that look like this. So this guy looks like it's really beat up. I don't want to put it in a vase. You know, I definitely wanted to deadhead it because it's kind of mushy. So you want to make sure that you go out into your garden and you get rid of the blooms that look like this, especially on your zinnias, because they get really heavy. They get really mushy. And what happens is if you don't deadhead these guys, they're going to wind up causing like mold issues. A lot of times zinnias will get like powdery mildew on their leaves this time of year because temps are cooling off at night and there's usually like a lot of moisture, a lot of rain. And so you want to make sure that you get rid of these guys. But here's the thing. You basically just have to discard this. Don't mulch it over. Don't like, you know, drop it to the ground and leave it there. Get rid of this because it might have some mold spores on it already. And unfortunately, you shouldn't use this guy for seeds next year because it's not ripe yet, like it didn't have a chance to mature. So even though it looks like a spent bloom, I know some flower tribe members have said, you know, why, why didn't my zinnia seeds work last year? I, I, you know, I deadhead them at the end of the season and I stored them and nothing came up. And the reason why is because I think sometimes, and I used to do the same thing before I knew the trick, when you remove like the seeds down here, and this is basically how you do it, you just kind of pop it off and there's like a little arrowhead here, not cool. That little arrowhead is your seed. But here's the thing, this arrowhead is kind of green. So I know I'm showing you like green against green, but this guy's not mature yet. So you need to wait until the zinnias look more like this. They look more like a Halloween flower. So this, believe it or not, is also a zinnia bloom. But this guy had a chance to really let its seeds, you know, mature and develop. And they'll only do that if you leave them on the stem, like in the ground. So, you know, don't think that you can bring this in, in the house and pop it in water and then those seeds will mature because it needs to be part of like that mother plant to continue to mature. So leave it, you know, in the ground until it starts to look something like this. And I'm gonna show you the difference in the seed so once again, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to give it like a gentle pull by the base. And there's your arrowhead. But notice how this arrowhead is like super, super uh, dark. I'm going to actually take a little. Maybe this will help show better. So you see how that's like super, super dark. So it looks like a little arrowhead. And that's your zinnia seed for next year. So that's like a perfect zinnia seed for next year. And now here's the thing, guys. You can either like trim off this little petal that's done. But if you're like harvesting a lot of them, you will literally like lose your mind doing that. So you don't have to, if you just pop them in the ground, you know, nature's good. Listen, when nature kind of replants itself, no one's worried about trimming things up. But some gardeners I know do like to do this. Uh, they're the tidy gardeners that I, I, I envy and they're organized and they, they have everything, you know, looking beautiful. Sometimes some gardeners will just take the flower head and they'll kind of trim off all this, you know, like the chaff, and this way their seeds are a little tidier and they might even bloom a little bit. Maybe they'll germinate faster, I'm not sure, but they'll kind of trim it off. And then once they're done trimming it off, they got rid of all that loosey goosey stuff that you don't need. Then they'll come in and they'll pluck out their little arrowhead. And it's just like a neater, so it, listen, it looks a lot better this way. So, you know, if you wanna do that, that's probably not a bad idea. I'm just a super lazy gardener, so. So I just kind of, you know, I, I'll take them all like in a handful. I'll take them in a handful and look at all those seeds I just got. Let me show you guys. Like that has to be like 10 zinnia flowers in my hand just by doing that. But guys, here's another thing that I, that I do. And it's, I think it's really important. Um, a lot of times when I do cut these from the field and they look like this Halloween flower, I won't quite start plucking out those arrowheads right away. I'll bring them inside or I'll bring them in my barn or I'll bring them in the garage and I hang them upside down. And the reason why I do that is because sometimes there's still moisture on the plant, like either from the dew in the morning or there can be some uh, like moisture if there was like some rain. And so I'll hang them upside down Let me get rid of some of this stuff here on my keyboard. So if you hang them upside down, you know that that flower is kind of dried out because you don't want to store them when there's moisture inside. Because if you store these guys when there's moisture inside, they're going to get moldy and then you're not going to be able to use them. 
So, you know, hang them upside down. I say for like a week, usually, you know, while they're by, away for like a week, then um, you're just going to, you know, just, it's just going to be perfect. So that's fine. So that's the Zinnia story. And so um, I wanted to give a shout out uh, to Lynn Reynolds. I wanted to thank you. Good morning. And uh, I love Lynn Reynolds because um, she supported me by buying me a cup of coffee last week. So if you guys are liking my uh, flower tips and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee, I have a supporters link. Uh, down below and that's really kind of fun and so I thank you for that thank you Lynn I actually have you written on my notes today to give you a thank you and um, if you don't want to buy me a cup of coffee that's okay because I'm still going to give you fun free flower tips every week so guys I try to show up here um, every Thursday at 10 30 a.m and so please join me I've been showing up from like March until now and I continue to keep doing so so please continue to join me I love seeing you guys here it means a lot that you guys are leaving me comments and letting me know where you're from so hi Camille you're from Indiana oh nice and Lola, let's see, good morning. You're from Martinez, California. Wow, okay, a lot of, lot of sunny friends there today. So thanks for joining me. And let's see who we, can, who we can move on to right now. So we talked about our zinnias. And once again, these are like a really beautiful, beautiful flower. So easy to grow in your garden. And what I love about zinnias is that they're drought tolerant. And uh, like I said, they bloom all summer long. So these guys started coming up in my flower field at the end of, I'd say like June. And they are gonna bloom all the way, probably here until October when we get that first frost. So I love those workhorse flowers. Like, you know, they're like the power, the powerhouses of the garden. They're gonna keep coming back, but you do have to go out there and deadhead them. Because if you don't, once those flowers start looking like this, what happens is the flower has a life cycle. And once it starts getting old and beat up, it will do exactly what I showed you uh, it, it's supposed to do is it's going to go to seed. The problem is once your zinnia plant starts to go to seed, it stops producing these blooms. So if you go out there and you give that zinnia like a nice deadheading, it knows, oh, you know, my work here is not done yet. I, you know, I can't go to seed because I don't have any seeds to do. My flower head's gone. I'm going to push forth another couple blooms before I'm done. So that's kind of like the trigger. And that's the same thing with um, your cosmos and with your celosia. So those are like some wonderful flowers. It's not... Um, the trick to use for sunflowers, because most sunflowers are kind of like one and done, uh, and even like the branching variety. They might have five or six flower heads on them, so you do have a lot of flower heads, but once they're done, you're not gonna get extra ones, so you don't have to deadhead them. And that kind of brings me to our sunflowers, because uh, it's also a good idea not to deadhead your sunflowers, because you want to grab those beautiful sunflower seeds. So, let's see. Here is an example of a terrific sunflower to harvest. And I'm gonna show you why. Let me get in here real tight. So let me bring this up a little bit so you know. Looking at my neck here. So the birds got a hold of most of this plant, which is awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I have a lot of birds out here. I love them, so I'm so happy when they're here. But the birds got a hold of most of this, and that's where you see all those like little holes. So there's tons and tons of holes. But the rest of this plant is packed with sunflower seeds. And notice how they're like nice and plump and black and juicy. And so another thing to notice is that all the, the flowers are gone, all the ray flowers are gone. So all those big yellow or orange flowers are gone. And the middle had something called disc flowers and the disc flowers scrape right off. That lets me know that this guy is ready for harvest. And another thing that lets me know it's ready for harvest, the back of the flower head is no longer green and it's no longer yellow. So it turned to like this brown. If your uh, sunflower head is still has traces of green on it, it means that the seeds aren't quite ripe yet. So then what I'm gonna do is once I did that, I'm just gonna like kind of crack this open. I think I should see my keyboard right now. There are like seeds everywhere, like flower debris. And then I just basically like kind of start shaking them out. And another sign that your sunflower seeds are ready to, to be harvested is that they pop out super easy. Like if they're not mature yet, you're gonna have to tug at them. And if you're gonna have to tug at them, it means they're not ready. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of sunflowers. So that's probably what, like 10 sunflowers? So this is like 10 sunflowers that I'm gonna have for my garden next year. And basically what I'm gonna do is kind of like the same trick that I did uh, with the other guys. I'm going to take some of these mature flower heads and I'm going to hang them upside down for like a week to make sure all that moisture is gone. 
And then once I once that week or two was gone, I'm going to bring them inside. And then sometimes what I'll even do is I'll take those sunflowers and I'll lay them on like newspaper just for like an extra day to make sure they're nice and dried out. And then what I'll do is I'll put them in these cute little jars. So I'll put them in jars or I'll put them in a paper bag or I'll put them like in an envelope or even a cardboard box. But if you use a jar like this, I like using jars like this because I like to gift these to people. And so I think I definitely have these jars uh, on my Amazon shop page, but I'll put like a little label and it will say like sunflower love and I'll put like a little twine or like a little tag. I love tags. I am like obsessed with tags. And these I have on my Amazon shop page too. I love tagging everything with these cute little sentimental, you know, like little gifts here. So this, I think I bought like a hundred of them for super cheap, has like a little, you know, hole here, has a little heart. And what I do is I just take a little piece of twine and I'll just write like, you know, love you, thinking of you. And then I'll put a little piece of twine around it and I'll wrap it around here. And sometimes I'll put like a little baby clothes pin. And then it's just such a cute little thing to have like a whole bunch of uh, like seeds in here, uh, like a whole bunch of sunflower seeds. Or sometimes I'll even do like, um, like a mixed garden. I'll do like a whole bunch of Siloatia seeds and zinnia seeds and cosmo seeds because they're kind of planted at the same depth and I'll say, you know, uh, happy gardening or, you know, wanted to give you a garden in a jar. And so it's kind of cute to store them this way. The only thing is though, guys, seeds like to uh, be in the dark. And if you're going to store them in something that's clear like this, you want to make sure that it's not anywhere near sunlight. So when I do store, I store all my seeds in like, once they're in here, I'll put them in like a big giant cardboard box and like I'll close it and I'll make sure that it's in like either my basement or my garage or the barn and it's away from direct sunlight. Because if you have these guys sitting like on your counter all winter long and the sun's hitting them, I mean, they might wind up not being so great the following year. So, um, yep, so that's the story. So that's the story with the sunflowers. But let me show you an example of a sunflower that's not right because some people have asked me that too. They're like, oh, you know, I, I harvested my sunflower seeds and I got nothing. So this is a sunflower that's not mature yet. And these are those ray flowers I told you about. So here's the story, guys. These guys have like all these yellow and even though it looks beat up and it is beat up and you know, it's past its prime, but all the yellow is still here. So this guy is still not mature enough to harvest the seeds. So even if I pluck off these ray flowers, I wanna show you what the disc flowers inside look like. So the disc flowers look like this. And when I go to scrape them off, remember the other one, they kind of flaked right off. These guys are still really tight on here. So even when I go to like scrape them, they're not budging. So that means that, you know, these seeds aren't really ripe and plump on the bottom. And then if I crack this uh, flower open, eek, it's really hard to remove some of these flowers. Like I have to kind of yank them. Like they're not just plucking off. And you could even tell they look, they're not quite as big. They're not as, as uh, plump as the other ones. It's also a smaller flower head. But anyway, so this guy, not so much. I would let this guy sit in the field for like another couple of weeks. You can tell even the back of the flower head is still green as opposed to this guy that was nice and brown. It doesn't have to be this brown. Like this guy's like totally right. Even if it gets like white. So when it gets to more like that whitish stage, then that's cool too. You can kind of do it with that. So that's the sunflower story. And um, let me see who's out there now. What's going on, guys? Frank, how are you? You're from Mitten State. Huh, okay. You're from the Mitten State. What's, who's, what's the Mitten State? <laughs> Frank, I need to know this. I love you guys. You always crack me up. Uh, oh, so Garden Girl said, can you save seeds from zinnias that you bring in from your cut bouquets? Great question. So I have to say, I don't think so. And I think it's gonna go back to that whole thing of like these, if I was to let, um, where did my guys go? If I was to let these guys, you know, basically dry out, I don't think they're gonna mature properly because they're not part of that mother plant getting those nutrients that it needs to mature. So um, I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, you could try it, but I just, you know, I don't think it's gonna, I know, I know it definitely won't work for sunflowers because I've tried it. Another flower tribe never asked me that like last year. And I was like, hey, let's try that out. Cause she said, I got this beautiful bouquet of sunflowers. You know, can I just like let them alone on the vase and then pluck out the seeds? And so I tried it and basically at the end of the day, even after like a month, like it looked like that sunflower head that I just showed you. So I think it's the same story with zinnias, I think. So, um, okay, baby Cantalan, you're watching from Toronto. Oh, terrific. So uh, Lisa said, Lisa B said, 
Um, but do these seeds really yield the same plant? Oh, I love your question. Sometimes I get something else, maybe due to pollination. You nailed it, Lisa. Your uh, planting instincts are dead on, spot on. Here's the thing. When you have all these beautiful flowers in your garden, uh, these pollinators come, you know, like the bees and the wasps and, and the butterflies, you know, and they do, you remember science, you know, in, in elementary school, they do all sorts of like cross pollination and they take the pollen from one flower, they bring it to the other. And then basically next year, you're not going to have the true variety that you planted. So that's one of the reasons why I still buy a lot of sunflower seeds. So my, I would say my flower farm, I probably have like 50, 50, 50% I'll plant with my own seeds that I harvested. And the other 50 I buy from, you know, like all sorts of seed companies because I want to have that true either Benary giant or state fair mix. I want to have that true gorgeous color or that, you know, that, that certain petal formation because of that. And the same thing with your celosia, like I harvest a ton of my celosia seeds. I love them, but I have to say the biggest, most beautiful celosia flowers that I get are the ones that I buy from the seed companies. So yeah, you're going to get a different variety. It's, it's really fun though. Like, so definitely don't let that deter you. Try it out. I mean, you will get beautiful flowers, but they're going to be more of like a, like a mishmash, you know, as opposed to like those true, the actual uh, variety. So that was a terrific question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Empress Kimberly, how deep do you plant Cosmo zinnias and sunflower seeds? Oh, excellent question. My Cosmo zinnias fell over this year. Okay. So here's the story with um, zinnias and Cosmos. You plant about a quarter of an inch deep. Like very, very light. They do need to be covered to germinate. So you're just going to do like a very light sprinkling of either potting soil. I like to use vermiculite, which is like a super, like a, like a, a very light, it almost feels like sawdust. But what I'll do is I'll chop up my garden and I'll sprinkle like some of my zinnia seeds. And sometimes I'll even, I plant them like for a cutting garden. So I'll do them, like I'll do like a whole row of zinnias and then like a couple inches away, I'll do like a whole row of cosmos. And I'll just sprinkle either that potting, like a light, light potting soil or vermiculite over the top, only about an eighth of an inch. Always read the back of your, of your flower seeds because every flower seed packet, or they should, they should always tell you the depth to plant it at because sometimes different varieties might need, you know, like an alteration. It might be a little deeper and might not be quite as, as deep, but then your celosia seeds. Oh my gosh. Celosia. Can we talk about celosia? Celosia is like planting pepper. It will like, it will like drive you batty. If you try to like space these guys out, this is what celosia seeds look like. And celosia seeds only have to be planted about an eighth of an inch. I mean, Think about how small an eighth of an inch is. I mean, it's like this little jhana of a nothing. So for, for when I cover my celosia seeds, I definitely just use a little sprinkling of that vermiculite because it's light and airy. So this is what a celosia seed looks like. This is actually probably about a hundred of them in my hand right now. Each of those little pepper flakes is a celosia plant. So imagine trying to space, you know, like the back, and I love this, the back of the packet will often say, you know, spacious celosia seeds, you know, like two to three inches apart. So like, you know, the first year I would take my finger and I would like lick it and I would like try to put it in the ground and then it would come back up. It was like this, you know, like a, this Abbott and Costello routine. So basically when I um, go to put these in the ground next spring, after all signs of frost are gone, I just take them and I sprinkle them as if, you know, like I'm, I'm making like a sauce and then I sprinkle the vermiculite right over it. And then I know that I'm gonna have like a mass planting. And then sometimes I just leave them go. Sometimes I'll go in there later as they start to come up really close together and I'll just thin out some of the seeds. Most of the time I just leave them alone. And the same thing, uh, so let me just show you real quick what it looks like when you're going into your garden to get your, your celosia. So this is like this is like two different varieties of celosia. Celosia has a whole bunch of different varieties. This is um, one of them. This one's not ready for seed just yet. Here's another uh, variety here. And then this is like one of the sister branches from this guy. So this, this one is more ready for harvest. And I'm gonna show you why. If you look inside here, those little pepper flakes are buried in there. And then I'll hold it up to the camera. Every time you see like that little black spot, that's a celosia seed. And I'm gonna show you, you just kind of scrape them into your hand. And if you scrape them or give it like a little shake, they're gonna wind up popping off on your hand. And then once I do that, I have like a whole bunch of these like, almost like, like the 
the, the chaff that's there. So what I'll do is I'll take these guys and I'll kind of like take all this stuff, get a box underneath. I am like the messiest person in the world. I think I make my husband insane. I have paper under here now. So I just kind of take this, you know, some of the seeds that I've been harvesting and some of their, you know, flower petals and the chaff, and I'll put it here and I'll just give it like a little shake and I'll do that over like a cardboard box. And then usually like the little tiny pepper flakes will come through. And then I definitely have this on the Amazon website. I've got like a bigger version for like your sunflower seeds. And then this was awesome. This is like a shaker that has like three or four different sizes. So like the holes are either small, medium or large. So depending on what flower seeds you have, you can kind of, you know, pop out the little things and then you put your, you know, you put all your goodies on the top and depending on, <laughs> I just made this huge mess. <laughs> I was trying not to. And then like you give it a shake and then those seeds will come through and they'll just leave like some of the, the, you know, the stuff on top, some of the old petals and stuff that you don't want to harvest. So that's the story. I can't believe I, I have like 5,000 seeds on my table right now. All right. So that's the story with that. But that was a ter terrific question for that. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Crystal Keith. Hello from Alabama. Hey, I have red clay soil. Oh, I'm so glad you brought this up. Do you still plant seeds the same way? Super question, because when you have clay soil, that means that it's not uh, draining um, the, these, all these plants that we're talking about now, your sunflowers, your celosia, your cosmos, your zinnias, they all like well-drained soil. And when you have clay soil, I know a lot of you people have clay soil. A lot of people have the opposite too, sandy, so sandy soil, which is a whole other story. And what happens is when you have that clay soil, the water doesn't drain out as it should. It kind of stays tight it's packed like clay soil almost feels like silk like it's really packed together so what you might want to do is before you plant your seeds you might want to amend your soil and you can do that by like adding a whole bunch of compost like organic compost you might even want to do it now in the fall like add a couple inches of compost that's going to kind of loosen things up a bit and then what i would do is in spring before you plant your seeds i would add some more organic compost you know, add it to your soil, chop it in there really good, and then it'll be a little more loosey-goosey. Now, if you have sandy soil, that means that you have the opposite problem and like the water runs psh, like right through it. And then sometimes these, you know, plants don't have enough time to absorb the water. So the same thing with the sandy soil, you might want to wind up adding some compost this time of year, next time of year, and then, you know, get it worked in there and it will kind of make it a little more of like a well-drained variety. And I, oh, I'm so happy I have this here. You can actually do like a soil test. And guys, I, I, uh, my flower course is live. I'm so, I, I can't believe I didn't tell you guys about this shit, which I've told you about it for the last like month. I'm sorry if this is like a broken record, but my flower courses are finally live. I have um, a link to it above in like the very first comment. I don't know if you guys can scroll, scroll all the way to the top, but I always have it in the bottom of my description. So I have three courses. One's gonna teach you how to grow beautiful uh, annual flowers like these zinnias, these sunflowers, these celosias uh, for a fresh cut flower garden. The second course is gonna teach you how to grow amazing perennial flowers like these limelights and peonies and so many other flowers. And then the third course is gonna teach you how to put them in beautiful arrangements. And I partnered with this great company called Retrieve. They make everything super searchable. And the beauty of these guides is that you don't have to watch all the videos. You can only like just put in like the search bar, how to grow limelight hydrangeas, and then boom, like that section of uh, the video populates. You might say, how do I harvest my zinnia seeds? Boom, there I am, like showing you on the ground, you know, showing you a visual, all video on how to plant your, you know, your zinnia, your zinnia seeds or how to harvest them. And then there's also a transcript on the bottom. If you want, you can read it. And then if there's something that you're interested in, you can highlight that, like, um, how do I plant a peony? And then boom, I pop up and I'm planting a peony. Like it's, it's insane. Like the searchability is wild. And the course also, when you, when you get it, you can also watch it in German and French and Spanish and uh, all these different languages. So it's really crazy. I really love it. I think it's going to make a great holiday gift for like the gardeners in your life. Um, but anyway, on that uh, video, I show I talk about soil and, and I show you how to figure out uh, if you have well-drained soil enough. Like I'm out there with like a shovel and I'm saying, you know, here are the steps. But this is like just one method to do. So I filled up this mason jar probably about a week ago with, with water. I filled it two thirds of the way up with just regular tap water. 
And then I, I dug into the soil of my garden. I removed the mulch first because you don't want to find out what kind of mulch you want. You want to find out what kind of soil you have. So I removed the mulch. I dug down and then I filled this mason jar up to about here with the soil. And then I let it settle out for a couple of days. Now up here is just some roots because I don't know, I had some plants that I had just uprooted. So the roots are kind of stuck up there. But I don't know if you could tell, if you have like clay soil, this is gonna be like really, 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 really dense. I mean, it's gonna be like super dense. This, I can tell I have a little bit of sand. I know it's hard to tell with my camera, I'm so sorry. I have a little bit of sand on the bottom, it's lighter. And then I've got like some regular dirt, which is my well-drained soil, and I don't have clay. So if you've got clay soil, it's gonna be super dense, super thick. You're not gonna see any kind of sand on the bottom. And then if you have sandy soil, you're going to see a ton of very light granule, you know, like sand after you do this quick little test. So um, there's also, guys, if you just Google, you know, how do I find out, you know, what kind of soil I have, Google will populate and you'll see like tons of like little articles and, and guys, or you can just, you know, hop over to my guide and, and check it out because, you know, we talk about that there. So that's, that's how you would amend the soil if you have clay soil. <laughs> kind of circle back like 10 minutes later to the question. Um, Let's see. Oh, Sunny, thank you. You like my shirt? Remember this little VW bug? I know, I feel like I'm such a kid of like the 70s. <laughs> um, what else is going on here? So, hello from uh, Alina Torres. Alina won our, my flower course last week. So Alina, I know that the, the people that, I, I have to get you that code yet. I'm so sorry. Just remember that I have to send you that code because Alina won my, my flower course last week. And you know what, guys? I'm going to pick a winner uh, today, too, to send you my uh, flower course. And it's called the Gardening Bundle. It's all three of those courses put together. So before the end of our live today, I will pick another winner and I will email you that. And Alina, I promise I'm going to send you that today. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Anyway, so let's go back here. So what are we up to? So we talked about... Um, a whole bunch of flowers. Let's talk about echinacea. This is really interesting, guys. And this is actually something that I just learned. Echinacea is amazing. It's also called coneflower. And my girlfriend Susie sent me a ton of these last, or like two or three years ago in a bouquet. I love her. So she was like my roommate in college. She's one of my, my like favorite people in the whole world. And I wind up sending her like a bouquet of flowers just to say, hey, you know, I miss you. I love you. And I burlap wrap it and it's like zinnias and sunflowers and it's got like craft paper and a big giant bow and I ship it out to her. And then about two weeks later, I get the same burlap, you know, beautiful burlap. The craft paper is still like beautiful, same beautiful bow. And she makes me a bouquet of echinacea stems because she knows I love them and she has amazing echinacea in her backyard. And she sent me beautiful stems that look like this in this like wrapped bouquet. It was such a great gift. Like I'll never forget that gift. But what I did was I made a mistake. I took these echinacea seeds and these just kind of get plucked out. You can see them here. Let me hold them up here. And what I did was I brought them in the house and I stored them the same way that I stored like my sunflowers, my celosia, the cosmos, the zinnias, you know, I put them in, in a place. And then I, I went out in spring and I buried them in the ground and I didn't get any flowers. And I was like, how, how can that be? Like I literally planted like 200 of these seeds. So it turns out that flowers like these purple cone flowers and also black eyed Susans, which I kind of beat this guy up, your black eyed Susans, these seeds, need to go through something called stratification. I think this was probably like an ACT or SAT term also that you know, we didn't think we had any use for, but we do, because stratification means that these seeds need to go through a period of germination in like a cold, moist place. So basically the best rule of thumb, if you're like harvesting your echinacea seeds or your, you know, your, um, your black eyed Susan seeds is when they're in this stage, you know, when they're really kind of prickly and pointy and I've got like a black eyed Susan, it looks, it looks basically the same as this guy. It's just a little bit smaller. Oh, here it is. This is what the black eyed Susans look like. You basically will take them and you can, you can do a couple of things. You can just deadhead the plant when it's totally like this, just kind of deadhead it and kind of bury it in your garden. 
or you can kind of crumple it up just a bit or maybe, you know, quarter it, crumple it up and then lightly bury it in your garden now, like in fall. And then what's going to happen is when it chills and it gets cold, it's going to go through that stratification process. And then you should wind up having some beautiful flowers in the spring. So that's the story with your echinacea seeds and with your black eyed Susan seeds. So just like a little, like that was a big, that was a big thing not to know on my part. Cause I was like, this is so crazy. You know what? I planted all these, why don't I get anything? So that's the story with, you know, some of those seeds. And um, let's see. Um, what do I got here for you guys? You can also kind of store those seeds in kind of like these little Tupperwares, which is fine. A brown paper bag is always the easiest way to go. Just make sure you label everything. Oh, and guys, some of the Flower Tribe members asked me, oh, you know, I didn't plant. I found a whole bunch of seeds that I didn't plant. You know, they've been sitting here for, um, you know, for like, like a year now, and I didn't put them in the ground. What should I do with them? Should I wait the next year? So um, I am super unorganized, and I just actually found this. Uh, 2019 some seeds and the best thing to do now at this point these are like some more celosia seeds these guys i hate to say it, it's fall right now like it's september i i have to wait like another year to, to put these in the ground because if i put these in the ground now nothing's going to happen as we're going into winter but if i were to have found these you know 2019 seeds and it was say like like july like june or july of 2021 like this year i would have put them right in the ground because sometimes, most of the time, seeds only, you know, like they're really, really strong and powerful, like, you know, the next year. And some seeds will come back even if you, you know, forgot about them and plant them like two years later. And I guess my rule of thumb is if you have them, you know, wait until like the right time of year and then just pop them in the ground and see what happens after like year two or three. Chances are you might not have a great germination rate, but why not? I mean, the alternative is to throw them out. And then you won't have, you know, like any seeds. But if, if you, you know, you have the old ones, put them in. And especially with like, um, like a lot of your bulbs. So, and this, this holds true with bulbs, even like um, in the winter, sometimes people will say, oh my gosh, you're like, you're supposed to be planting your daffodil bulbs right now in fall. And they're going to pop up in spring. Same thing with your tulips and your alliums. And sometimes, you know, people have peony tubers, pop those guys in the ground now because it's fall. But then sometimes people will say, oh, you know, my gosh, it's, you know, I, I, I missed the boat and, and what do I do, you know, with, with, this, with this tuber? Here it is, uh, say like June, and I never put this daffodil tuber in. At that point, I would pop it in the ground in June, even though you're probably not gonna get a plant that year because the, the uh, you know, the, the alternative is to leave it stored in, in like your garage and then the plant's probably just going to wither away and rot and die because it's got no nutrients and it's probably just going to die. So just, you know, if you if you're like me and you're sometimes you just forget to do stuff on time, pop them in the ground. But, you know, if it's the seeds that need to be planted in the spring, do it in the spring. If it's tubers that you've missed it, just just get the tubers in there. And so that's the story with that. Also, this is very cool. And I've never tried this before. I found seeds from my peony plants. Does anybody grow peonies from seeds? Because I've never done it. I want to show you what it looks like. This is so cool. It looks almost like something from a spaceship. So Sheldon and I were walking through the garden last night with Lucy, and I see this little sweet thing. So there are seeds inside there. Can you guys see that? There's like little tiny, like round seeds in each of those pods. It looks like something science fiction-y. So basically what I'm going to do, and of course I had to read up on this last night because I've never done it. I love going through this gardening process and learning alongside with you guys. I'm basically just going to pop these seeds out. So here's a good one right here. Can you guys see that? I'm going to pop it out. And from what I saw online from some of the gardening blogs is they said to pop it in the ground now. So I'm going to take this little seed that I just popped out of this pod and I'm going to plant it in the ground now. So now, like I said, it's like September by me. So, and we're going to see what happens. So normally this time of year, I'm either like scouring Lowe's, Home Depot, my garden centers. I love finding the peonies that are, that are already like potted and they're actual plants. They look like this right now. They look horrible, but that's okay because I love buying them when they're like this because they're usually half price, but I'll pop them in the ground at this time of year like this, knowing that they're going to come back next year. Or I'll plant my tubers. Like sometimes I'll get my tubers from like dutchbulbs.com and um, I'll plant them in the ground. They come back next year, but I've never tried it from seed. 
So let me know, guys, has anyone uh, had any luck with pe planting peonies from seed? Because I'd love to know because peonies uh, are like one of my absolute favorite flowers. So that would be really, really good to know. All right. So that's the story with that. When I was out in my garden yesterday, I made sure that I cut back a lot of these peony leaves that look like this because they're really beat up this time of year. Now is a good time to kind of trim them back and make sure that you remove those stems from the garden. But I left the peonies alone that had leaves that still look nice and fresh and green. This guy has like a little bit of a brown spot, but most of it's nice and fresh and green because those plants are still like feeding uh, the plant and it's healthy and it's not, you know, all like mildewy. So it's a good idea to kind of leave the peonies in place that, you know, actually have those, those rich green leaves. And so that's the story with that. And what else did I want to show you guys? <laughs> Go through this table here. Check out the size of this crazy limelight bloom. So I cut this this morning. I think it's bigger than my head. Is it bigger than my head? It's bigger than my head. And this is like just one of those giant limelights. People keep asking me, what are you using for fertilizer? These limelights are like insane. And we did a live uh, video yesterday where I'm actually outside in my garden. So check out, I've got like a whole playlist of my live videos on this channel. You have to see what the, the secret garden looks like this time of year. It's like gigantic. And I've got about I don't know, like a hundred of these guys in the back of the pink golf cart and Lucy's in the video. Uh, if you're interested in limelight hydrangeas, you have to see this video. It, they're so beautiful and so spectacular. But then a lot of people said, what, you know, what fertilizer are you using? I don't use fertilizer. I have to say, I very rarely will use uh, a fertilizer for my hydrangeas. And so the reason why this guy is so big is number one, we had a ton of rain this year. And I think that made a really big difference. And number two, uh, um, some of you that have watched your channel know this already. I pruned back this hydrangea bush last spring in the beginning of spring. And I usually do not do that, but my hydrangea needed like a recharge. And so I did that. And now the, the blooms are like colossal, but check out how long this stem is. And this is only like a quarter of like this. I think the stem is probably about 20 feet long in, in my garden, but I want to show you something fun that you can do this. Number one, you can make these giant, crazy dried arrangements, you know, like I've been showing you. And, you know, I show you how to do all those arrangements in that flower course. I do like step by step. I actually show you like piece by piece how I do them. But here's just like a quick little florist power tip for you guys. You don't have to use like this big, giant, colossal bloom to enjoy. You can actually kind of piecemeal it out. So check out some of these stems here. I'm actually just going to clip. I want to clip my finger off. Um, I clip like little stems from this bloom. And when I do that, I could just put them in little tiny, like I've got these cute little bud vases. And what I could do is just put them in these cute little tiny bud vases. And then I'll put these like in my kitchen or my bathroom. Uh, but isn't that cute? This guy's kind of goopy. So, but you can kind of do that with some of these big giant blooms. You can kind of just, you know, kind of dissect them and you can just kind of keep cutting them down. Like here's another really good stem here. And this guy, this stem is a little more stickly, which is awesome. So check out this beautiful stem. So you can kind of put these in some of those bud vases. This one right now has a little rose in it. I love bud vases. Just a a single little, and once again, I deadheaded these roses. Now it's a good time to deadhead some of your roses, and instead of throwing them out, put them in these little bud vases. But then you can just kind of pop it in here, and you'll do them in like groupings of two or three, and it just looks really cute. It looks like you have like a whole little garden, like in your kitchen. So that's the story with that. And let me see, I always have like little show notes for you guys. I'm like such a like, like a geek. Hold on, we went over that, we went over that, we did echinacea, and okay, so I, I think we covered everything I wanted to cover today, guys. Um, let me take a look at some more of your questions, guys. Let me answer some of your questions. And guys, if you don't know about our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group, please hop on over there because there's gardeners from all over the world and they're posting beautiful pictures of their own flowers from their own gardens and they're asking and answering tons of garden questions over there. So I try to cover as many of your questions as I can each week on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and, and, um, and, you know, and YouTube, but I can't get to all of them. So I appreciate you guys covering me and answering each other's questions. I think it's fabulous. And you guys are a wealth of knowledge. A lot of times, like you'll know the answers, you know, before, I even do. So I, I, I'm always learning from the Flower Tribe. So hop on over there. It's the Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. And let's see what's going on. When do hydrangeas bloom in the Florida climate? 
Um, I guess it depends on what type of hydrangeas that you have and which part of Florida. Like I know my dad lives in Florida and Sheldon's brother lives in Florida and like their climates are like super different because one's Northern Florida and one's Southern Florida. So what type of hydrangea do you have? So let's find that out first. And, um, so, Nora, you're from the UK. Oh, sweet. Love that. My daughter's over there now. I'm like, this study abroad. Hi, 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 Julie. Um, when do hydro... Oh, the Florida climate. Um, so here's the thing. Um, so this hydrangea question again, the Florida climate. So if you, you know, they're going to bloom at different time spans. So like if you have like a, like a limelight hydrangea, it's going to bloom at a different time than your endless summer and your Nikos. So I guess it's kind of important to know like what type of hydrangeas are we talking about? Um, and I know that Annabelle's do really well in Florida. I think Limelight's do really well in Florida. Some of the other varieties like Endless Summer and Nico, they might do uh, pretty good in Florida as long as they have like a lot of afternoon shade. So that's the part of the hydrangeas in Florida that I do know. Um, who's out in Florida? Any Flower Tribe members? Let me know. When are your, when are your uh, hydrangeas coming up? Let me know. <laughs> Empress Kimberly, I love your little celebration there. Can cone flowers... Uh, be overwintered in pots. You live in zone six. Super question, garden girl. Yes. Yes. That's a super question. If you bring uh, the cone flowers in, they can definitely be wintered over, but I think they need to be chilled. So another method with your seeds, with your echinacea seeds, if you don't want to like plant them in, in the, the ground when it gets cold, because you're supposed to actually wait with the echinacea seeds to put them in the ground when the ground's actually cold. I think the black eyed Susans you might be able to just put in the, you know, the full ground now, but you, you can also put them in your refrigerator for a couple months. So if you want to take those echinacea seeds that need the stratification and your uh, black eyed Susans and just store them in like, you know, tight, you know, something tight and, you know, that's like sealed and put them in the bottom of your refrigerator, that I think would take care of that whole stratification process. So, um, you looked it up, and depending on where you are, hydrangeas bloom in late spring or early summer around the Orlando area. Thank you, Joseph M. Joseph M., you're getting my Gardening 101 bundle uh, for helping out. I always appreciate when you guys help out. So, Joseph M., do me a favor. Send me your uh, email. So email me at kellyleeman at cranberryfields.com, and that's spelled like my uh, florist, C-R-A-N-B-U-R-Y.com. Uh, uh, so to check that out, I have my, um, the information's all below in my descriptions. So please give me a shout out. If not, uh, give me another shout out in comments and, and we'll, uh, and I just need your email and I will send you my gardening 101 bundle. Thank you for helping the flower try by looking up that question for RK7M or RX7M. So thank you for that. Yep. You live in Sarasota. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh oh, the, it gets more complicated. So it's not Orlando. Is that? I guess it's not near Orlando, so it's, it could be different in Sarasota. Anyone want to look that up for us? <laughs> I would appreciate that. Can you explain how to do the coffee grounds for the hydrangeas? When, oh, uh, okay. So the coffee grounds are going to give you, you know what, I did a whole video showing you like, like you know, exactly when, um, I got to think back to how this whole thing works. I think the coffee grounds are good for the blue hydrangeas. Um, you have to go back to, I have a video on there. It tells everything about it. It's on a live, it's on a live. And I'm sorry, I have to do like a, I, I need to, to leave in like two minutes. And I know it's going to take me longer to explain it because it has to do with, you're, you're going to be altering the pH of your soil with the coffee grounds. And you're going to want to make it like either more alkaline or acidic. And so um, check out the video that I did that talks about, I think it says how to turn my hydrangeas from blue to pink. It's, it's in the playlist because it's going to be a little more complicated. And Vicky said, related to the point on echinacea, did you say to plant those seeds when it's cool? Yes. So I think the story, I think the story with the um, with the, the echinacea is I think you're supposed to wait till the ground is really, really cold. So maybe just triple check that fact. I think you're supposed to wait till you know the ground is almost frozen until you put those in the ground. Uh, but just let's triple check that one. Okay, and Joseph M. Okay, oh, I got you. Okay, so I got your email. Terrific. Uh, I'm going to send you that Gardening 101 bundle code. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to go live over on Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group probably in about 10 or 15 minutes. So if you want to hop over there and say hi to some of the Flower Tribe members, that's great. I'm going to be covering <laughs> most of the stuff that we just covered here. So you probably don't want to hear the same thing twice. But if you want to go over there and just say hi to everybody, that would be awesome. And guys, I'll see you hopefully next 1030, uh, next Thursday at 1030 a.m. And um, 
Thanks again for showing up. I appreciate it. And thank, thank you again, Lynn Reynolds. I appreciate my cup of coffee. I'm going to kick back and have like a quick coffee break right now. And, uh, and thank you, Gardening Girl. Uh, oh, oh, Gardening Girl said, no, sorry. I just wanted to know if cone flowers grown in pots can stay in the garden. Uh, oh yeah, not transplanted into the ground. So sure, I would, if you want to leave, that's even better because if your cone flowers are left in a pot and they're left outside, that's your best bet because they're going to get that cold stratification, you know, when things get cold in, in your neck of the woods. So yes, definitely. Just make sure you keep up with the watering and that should be great. And then, okay, so that's it guys. So I will see you guys in the next video or I'll see you over on our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group in just a few minutes. Okay, take care. Thanks again. Bye.